Garrett Haig is live for us on the Hill. Interesting game plan here by Nikki Haley, right? Increasingly personal in her attacks as Donald Trump is trying to take another step to bring together the GOP in his name, if you will, with his loyalists. Yeah, I think that's right, Hallie. I mean, here you see Donald Trump trying to look past Nikki Haley, taking steps that you do normally see a nominee take, but typically when they're the nominee, or at least when they're the presumptive nominee after a primary is over, by trying to force this consolidation of the institutional Republican Party behind him even now. He chokes off her options even further. Nikki Haley running a much more aggressive campaign now in South Carolina than she really did at any point during this contest up until now. You could argue it's too late. But the problem here is also that we have seen through ample polling that going after Donald Trump directly can also make you less popular with the kind of base Republican voters who are deciding things in states like Iowa and states like New Han or excuse me, South Carolina that she has to win now. So tricky politics for her as Donald Trump is trying to basically say, I'm over this part of the race. I'm already looking ahead to Joe Biden. So, it, and like, let's say he's looking ahead to a potential second term, too. There, there is somebody, a, a loyalist, if you will, who sounds like he won't be a part of his administration. Jared Kushner, his son-in-law, obviously a former senior advisor in the first term, was asked about this in a brand new interview with Axios in just the last hour. Let me play a little bit of that exchange. So is that a no? If he calls you on November whatever and says, I'd like you to come back to DC, you say, thanks, but I'm good? Uh, yes. Uh, you know, from, from my perspective, uh, again, if you look at the way President Trump has been handling his campaign this time, uh, this is his third time doing it. And he's had time um, to uh, to really reflect on everything. I think that the team around him is, is maybe the best he's had. What's so interesting here, right, is the Jared Kushner of it all, somebody who was um, very much engaged in the White House operations in, in some ways and disengaged in others based on all the reporting over the mm -hmm. course of the last, you know, many years. A That's right. Kind of a lightning rod, you know, uh, for some of those in the former president's inner circle. People loved him or they sure did not love him. Now he's kind of saying, well, I'm doing all these investments. Like, I'm, I've got this investing thing going on. Like, I'm good. And talking about the way that he sees his father-in-law's political operation running in the future. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple pieces to that, Hallie. Uh, number one, most Republicans I talk to agree with the sentiment that this Trump campaign is the most well-run of his three presidential campaigns. They like the team around him. They like the way that that team has been able to balance the competing uh, issues here of letting Trump be Trump and also running a campaign that could at least theoretically win in a general election and not alienate the people in the middle to win over the people on the right that uh, Trump appeals to kind of more naturally. The idea of Kushner not being involved in a second Trump campaign uh, White House is interesting because given his role as the president's son-in-law, the stuff he says to the president, if he were to be president again, would still carry enormous weight whether he has a formal role or not, right? What he says at brunch on a Sunday morning is just as important to Donald Trump as what his paid advisors might mm. say. And I think you heard Kushner kind of expand on this idea of why he wouldn't come back but could potentially still be influential in some more remarks from that same interview. There's been a lot more time for people to think about the policies. I think he has a much better understanding of who was effective in all these different roles. Uh, and I suspect he'll have a, a very, very long list of very qualified people uh, to choose from from all the different uh, jobs. So you see, because you're talking about the team that is potentially available to Donald Trump, I mark my words, uh, Hallie, if Donald Trump does win the presidency, Kushner doesn't need a formal role to still be influential in that White House. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.